Okay, this is John Willis again here. This is the third in the series of kind of teaser videos for our event. Actually, next week, it's come up on us pretty fast. Uh, DevOps for Networks, October 14th, the Computer History Museum in Mountain View. Um, I've got um, a, a really special guest, and uh, it's going to be a key part of a panel, uh, Jeremy Shulman. Uh, let me tell you a little about Jeremy. I when I first, um, about a year and a half ago, a year ago, whatever, give or take a few months, I decided to kind of explore this networking and DevOps thing. And, and I remember seeing all these press releases about chefs doing this and puppets doing this and chefs doing it with, with the network space. So I started trying to figure out what all those press releases and all, all roads, like Rome, led to Jeremy Shulman. <laughs> um, he had basically written what was really, I think, the first canonical source of... Uh, yeah, again, there's a lot of other stuff going out there. I don't want to get over that where people piss at me. But, but, I mean, he basically wrote the, the first Ruby Gem on Juniper, wrote the first Puppet Manifest to actually explore kind of a devops network config of a switch, you know, and, and network devices. And, and then he drove the uh, chef guys... Um, to do that, some additional work, and and I think the the running joke is every time I see a new um, vendor in the configuration place display how they do VLAN, the VLAN lag groups, and all that, they're all using the original names that you set up in the in the in the puppet example. So the Ansible one, the the CF Engine one, the Salt one, they're all using the they don't they didn't even change the names of your original example. So anyway, long story short, I'd like to introduce you, Jeremy Shulman. Jeremy. Introduce yourself. Yeah, well, <laughs> after that, John, you know, thank you, right? I um, I got started with uh, really bringing DevOps to the networking world back when I was at Juniper, and it was a fantastic opportunity. Uh, and now I've, I've started Sprockets, which is a company dedicated to, to really bringing to networking the framework that I believe that we need uh, for the networking purposes. So I'm, I'm really excited about this event in particular because I'm, I'm hoping to see uh, this bringing together of both the, the DevOps side and the networking side so that we can kind of share our experiences and stories and, and kind of learn from what happened in DevOps and, and bring that forward into networking. So I'm, I'm really excited. No, it's really cool. I mean, you know, going going into the event discussion a little bit. I mean, when I just thought about this event, you know, I, there was kind of a large field of people I could have picked, and I, I, I you know, I kind of patting myself on the back here, but it, I mean, obviously, Jr. from Cumulus is a great keynote, right? Uh, um, if you haven't heard uh, Brent Salisbury, you know, he's amazing. But I, I, I think it was like really important that Jeremy came because I've had. You know, when when I first saw that stuff, I reached out to him, and we started. We've been having an ongoing discussion for quite a while now about all things about networking and DevOps, and and, and Jeremy is like incredibly passionate about, um, like I want to say change, but change part of it of having people think differently for the betterment of this industry. So it leads me into the like, um, tell everybody why you're so passionate about DevOps and networking. I mean, you gave a glimpse of it here a minute ago, but. Um, yeah. yeah, well, there's a couple of things. You know, one is there's this really big shift that is just now happening in the networking market, which is, for me, really the, the key to unlocking the ability to automate the network. And the shift is all of the networking vendors starting to deploy out APIs on their infrastructure. That is a key enabler. That is a kind of a market trend. Five years ago, we really didn't have that. It was all screen scraping CLIs for, the, for vendors that didn't have an API. And at Juniper, I was kind of spoiled because, you know, Juniper has this really phenomenal API. Uh, it's an XML-based API. The challenge was we couldn't unlock its potential in the market. You know, there was basically uh, the opportunity to talk to customers and say, hey, you know, you can automate the network. And five years ago, people were like, eh, why would I want to do that? Eh, the screen scraping is terrible. And they're like, no, no, there's a really awesome XML API. And they're like, eh. We're not programmers. We don't know how to, to consume this technology. So for a very long time, you know, it was, eh, and people kind of muddled along. Now what's really exciting is two things. One is the shift by the, the networking vendors themselves, and, and more importantly, the business drivers, the businesses themselves are saying the network is old and antiquated in its, in its management approach. We have to get it on board with kind of the broader workflow orchestration. The server guys have got their stuff together. The cloud guys have their stuff together. The networking guys, you know, it's not the networking guys, it's the networking infrastructure that is, is really kind of this weak link or bottleneck. And now 
we have the opportunity to fix that. And having spent a, a number of years in this space, I know what's possible. I know not only what's possible, but what's probable. Right? We can look at the DevOps and go, we know what worked. We know what you know. We know what didn't work. Let's let's learn from that. Bring it to the networking world. And now we're in just the beginning stages of seeing the the potential of, of network automation come to fruition. It's going to be a journey, but it's just starting now. And and I'm really excited about what's what's now possible. Now it's making it consumable, right? And that's that's kind of where I uh, I'm really focused on right now. Well, that's a great lead into the next thing I wanted to discuss, which is. I think you know we've both had we've had this discussion over so it's kind of cool. I, over the years, I meet people, and Jeremy's one of these people now. Where we just kind of talk about the industry, you know, periodically. You know, he'll call me and say, "Hey, John, I'm thinking of this. What do you think?" And I'll call him and I'll say, "Hey, what do you think of this?" But we've had a discussion. So, so the the story is that we both agree we know how the movie ends. We just don't know how the scenes play out. And so <laughs> one of one of the discussions about how the scenes play out. Is I'm going to set up the stage, what I think is going to be an awesome panel presentation, um, which is going to be the question of, you know, in DevOps and compute, we we pretty much are leaning towards you kind of got to be a programmer. There's some dissent and there's some good arguments on either side. The, this whole question of is it inevitable that the network person has to become a programmer? So we're going to have a, a really killer debate, and and Jeremy has some really strong thoughts on it. We're going to bring in some DevOps like. Uh, so De DevOps ninja software dudes to kind of represent where you know their view of how compute works, and I, I suspect their view is going to be pretty tilted towards the programming aspect for network people. But that's going to be a killer panel, and 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 um, you know Jeremy's going to be a big part of that discussion. So you want to give us a little bit of a hint, but don't give us too much. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, John. Well, so here's here's my my perspective. I was a software engineer for, for 12 years. I'm a you know classically trained software engineer. And what that means is I understand what everybody thinks they want to go do, right? I understand, you know, Lori called it the dark side of, of programming, and I kind of gave her some shtick about that. It's really not the dark side. It's really just understanding that, you know, what you're going into, right? If you want to program the network, you know, there are various approaches, there's methodologies, there's discipline, right? And if you want to produce consumable technology for other people, right, that's a discipline. So I'm really excited about talking about the elements of what it means to be a programmer or what it means to program the network, I, you know, and, and share my perspective both as somebody who was a classically trained software engineer, but also somebody who spent the last five, six years talking to real networking people and figuring out what they can consume or what they can do or what they feel that they can do and approach a way that we can help them move through the journey. It's like, you know, if they just want to get started, what is appropriate for them, right? Not for everybody, but, you know, what is it that they can do that enables and empowers them to take advantage of this technology. Does it mean, well, i got to learn Python and be a programmer? Does it mean, can I use a framework tool? Does it mean I have to use a point-and-click GUI? It's all about understanding people and their ability to change and understanding their skill sets and helping them develop new skill sets at their pace. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this is going to, I mean, I, I'm excited about all the presentations. I mean, again, I, um, you know, the, you know, J, you know, again, the, just do a little promotion. Jr. We got Prince Salisbury, Colin McNamara, Laurie McVitie. Um But this one's going to be really fun because I want to hear. We get a bunch of people on the network side, a bunch of people on the DevOps side. I just, you know, the panel's only going to be about 30, 35 minutes. But, but for those of you who know, we're running this as a DevOps day style. So the second half of the day is going to be all open spaces, and I suspect there'll be a really good. I can't imagine that somebody's not going to run it continue that discussion in an open spaces. So I, I, I think this, uh, if, you, you know, if you're interested in kind of a good understanding, and, and there'll be some good history lessons too of, you know, what we've learned and what worked, what didn't work. So anyway, it's going to be really exciting. Um, so cool stuff. Um, I guess last but le least is what I'm asking everybody, which is kind of obvious, but it's, it's the, the corny ending question. Which, so why are you excited about this particular event? What's well, going to motivate you to go across the country, come out here and spend some time with this one. Yeah, well, what I'm really excited about is seeing, you know, these two groups, you know, the, the DevOps guys and the networking guys come together so that they can hear each other's stories, you know, that kind of campfire experience. This 
is one thing that I really learned when I was at Juniper and trying to move this idea forward with the networking guys. What helped was bringing in the server DevOps guys, and they would show what they were doing with server automation. The networking guys would go, oh, my God, I didn't even know that was possible. I need some of that for, for the network. And just this cross-pollination, just, just talking about what they're doing and sharing these ideas, that alone to me is, is going to be an amazing experience because, you know, right now the networking guys have their events and the server guys have their events, and now we're getting, getting a little bit of cross-pollination, you know, as the industry is heating up. But I, I think this is the, really the first event purpose-built for this activity, and I think this is going to be the beginning of many other events like this. I'm very excited to be part of the very first one. Awesome. Well, thank you, buddy. Um... And I look forward to uh, that panel, and I look forward to seeing you next week uh, to continue this kind of awesome discussion. Thanks, John. Thank uh, you. All right.